guess, or yes, almost, yes, hi Jim, hello Jim, man this vlogging thing's gonna be rough, you know I'm not really one to put my face on the internet for the whole world to see, besides spring break with Lucy, but that's another story and I won't get into that. In your last email, you told me how dead the place you're studying at is. And to cheer you up, you wish for me to vlog you instead of emailing. Well, despite what you say, I think it's totally awesome that you are overseas studying accounting in, drum roll please, Romania. How cool is that? In your last email, you asked if I'd received any offers to study art overseas yet. Well, to begin with... Mia, Mia, Mia! I have the most outstanding news. Wait. What are you doing? Oh, well, I'm just... Oh, never mind. I have the most incredible news. Not one, but three guys have asked me out to Saturday night's party at Carfax Hall. Isn't that incredible? Wait, Carfax, Lucy, is that near a cemetery? Yes, yeah, so? So you barely walked by there on the way to a rave, and now you want to go to a party at Carfax that's near a cemetery? Well... Oh, it doesn't matter. The party is to celebrate a hot new teacher assistant starting and the party is going to be awesome. And I never would have imagined not one, but three guys asking me out at the same time. And I so need your help choosing which one to go with. Please, please, please. So recap, you've already heard that the party is to welcome a hot new teacher assistant. His name is Drake Alicard. It's an unusual name. He must be from Europe or something. Anyways, I've heard that he's studied at all the most popular universities in Europe. At Oxford. Oh, couldn't you just die? Anyways, I'm getting ahead of myself. All right, so Lucy. Okay, Lucy has finally settled on Arthur Holmwood. You remember Arthur. You played basketball with him? Well, until the ball hit his. <laughs> I do think Arthur will be a good match for Lucy. In your last email, you also asked if Lucy's still having those horrific nightmares. Well, she had one a couple of nights ago that was really cryptic. It's about us, you and I. There's another man there. Well, at first he's a man and then a monster. Like I said, cryptic stuff. Apparently a love triangle forms and it's up to me to decide who to be with. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. Sounds like one of Lucy's girly movies. But it gets pretty sketchy after that. Apparently, I have to make the biggest decision of my lifetime. <laughs> but I can't see anything happening to us. I've just received my letter about studying overseas now. <laughs> it's really weird, this letter. On really really old parchment paper and it's wax sealed and it's in cursive maybe they're big Harry Potter fans or something <laughs> I guess there's no point just looking at it I didn't get in Mia Mia hurry up the party starts in a few minutes why aren't you dressed I am dressed. No, 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 no. We have a lot of work to do in only a short time. Lucy. No, you're not going dressed as the character from the Beverly Hillbillies. Lucy. Come on, Mia. Oh. Well, that's all for me tonight, Jim. I'll talk to you soon. Lots of love, Mia. Hi Jim, you'll never believe what happened here tonight. When we were at the party, Lucy disappeared. Everyone had theories about where she went. One guy said she went off with a tall, dark, handsome stranger. A girl said she just left completely. I mean, this is so not like Lucy. She would never leave a party for a stranger, no matter how handsome he is. Then one of her friends told me she went to the cemetery. 
again, so not like Lucy. I followed her there and still can't stand the thought of going into a cemetery after midnight. When I got to the cemetery, I don't know what I saw, but I'll never forget it. Lucy was sitting on a gravestone and there was this thing above her head. At first it looked like a man and then the next minute a bat. Before I could tell what it was, it disappeared. I went over to Lucy. There were two holes in the side of her neck. I rushed her back to my dorm and called Dr. Stewart. He came and looked her over and said that she probably just had a mozzie bite. Whatever it was, I hope we've seen the last of it. Night, Jim. I love you. Hi Jim, so you've already seen footage from last night and said what the f***? Honestly, I don't know what happened. The school security are calling it a prank for no real reason. As for Lucy, she's still affected by the events of last night's party. This morning she claimed she could hear the students blow her gossiping. As proof of it, I have footage. Party it was last night. <sighs> Did you hear that? What, Lucy? I thought I might have heard whispers coming from the floor below. I can't hear anything. So after that, I called Dr. Stewart to see if he could come and examine Lucy. He wasn't available, so I got John to come instead. John is Dr. Stewart's son. He's training to be a doctor at the local hospital near campus. Does the camera need to be on? Well, no, but I, I want to show Jim she's okay. Everything looks fine here. Now, watch this finger, Lucy. You are fine, but you need plenty of rest. You look drained from the party. I feel drained. It's like something has drained the life out of me. Could you tell us what happened? It's all a blur. I can't remember anything. It's like someone has blocked my memories, preventing me from remembering anything. It feels like a black veil over covering my eyes. Hey, it's alright Lucy, calm down. 
Don't beat yourself up. Is there anything we can do to help recover her memory? Well, there is one way, but it's dangerous. What is it? We could hypnotize you, but it's too dangerous. We may make your condition worse. I'm willing to try anything, John. Just wait a minute, Lucy. You need to think this through. We could turn you into a human vegetable when we're through with you. Is that what you think of me? No, no, no. I'm not a child, Mia. If there is anything that can help, I'll do it with or without your support. Lucy! Hey Lucy, it's me again. This is my third call to you today. Can we please talk? That didn't go as planned. I've called, texted, and tried Lucy's Facebook page, but she's refused to talk to me. If only I could have said something different. To convince her how much she means to me. You and Lucy are my dearest friends, and I wouldn't wish harm befalling either of you. Years ago, I lost both my parents in a car crash, and Lucy was the only family I had in this world. It's taken a while, but I finally felt like I was getting over it. Mia, I thought about what you said. But you should also realise that it's my decision here. And if I turn into a vegetable, I know it's not going to be the end. Mia, do you remember in high school, a girl click called The Three Sisters tried to pull us apart at a party? Yeah, how could I forget? They always made fun of my clothes, and one time they replaced my medication with Tic Tacs. And they invited me to join them as long as I ended our friendship. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> but I told them to take their membership and, and stop, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> At that time, I stood by you when you needed it the most. And now, it's your turn to do the same for me. I just don't want to lose you too. <sighs> but you won't. Because we're sisters. And sisters are... Forever. <laughs> so, are we cool with me doing this? No. Not alone. I'm going to be present when it happens. Thanks. Hi, Jim. Today we're here for Lucy's hypnotic treatment. Besides from John and I, Lucy's best friend Quinn is here. Unfortunately, Arthur can't be here due to family commitments. Shh, it's starting. Now Lucy, you will tell us calmly and clearly what happened to you at the party. He came to me. His eyes lured me to the cemetery. I can feel his breath on my neck. What does he look like? He's here. He's coming. Must warn Mia. Mia! 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 Run! He's coming. What do coming. you see? Get away! Get away! Mia's eyes! His horrible red eyes! They whisper to me. They need me. They drain me. John, stop it! Stop! Can't you see she wanted to stop? He won't stop! He won't! Stay away from my master! If you interfere, you'll suffer a death a thousand times more painful than you can imagine! On the count of three, you will awaken and have no memory of the last few minutes. One, two, three, awake! <sighs> wrong guys what did you find out that didn't go as planned I can't believe that happened 
John said that Lucy should lie down after the treatment and get some rest, but I just can't get over what she said and the way she said it. It was like someone was speaking through her, like she was under a spell. John said it's probably Lucy's ID part to her brain, which is the part that speaks out your most hostile and violent thoughts. I have no head for science though. Afterwards, John and I took our findings to the police, but they said they don't deal with imaginary bad guys or hypnosis victims. And then they kicked us out. Professor Van Helsing wasn't much help either. He said because no one was seriously injured that we should just let it go. I mean, this is so crazy. I mean, I can't get over it. Maybe everyone's right, but I just can't get over the feeling that it's like a dream. That's all for me today, Jim. Lots of love. Hi, Jim. I couldn't sleep, so I thought I'd discuss with you about what happened the other day. I mean, it was just so weird. It was like a scene out of The Exorcist or The Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Trying to put together the pieces from the party and the cemetery encounter, but with... Hi! I heard you talking to your camera and thought you might like some hot chocolate. You look worn out. Thank you. Mia? What happened when I was under, you know? Is it worth talking about? It was so weird. I don't even know if I'm sure what happened. One minute you were hissing like a wild animal, the next you started talking about a master and how if we intervened, something bad would happen to all of us. Man, that's freaky. Do you remember anything from that night? Nothing much would be of help. I mean... It was just so weird, I kind of want to forget it. Ditto. What's with the camera? Uh, well, that's how I talked to Jim. At first I thought it would be kind of lame, but it's really good to keep in contact with him while he's overseas. You miss him a lot, huh? Every day. Oh, come here. Hi Jim, today in history class we were learning about the women's suffrage movement and its great impact on the new woman. The new woman was a historical feminist movement that started in the 19th century and influenced the way we view feminism well into the 20th century. You must get sick of me talking about history all the time but I just find it so fascinating. I mean this was a movement that started it all and changed the way women viewed themselves in society. I can just imagine myself standing alongside them, fighting with them. The reason I'm talking about all this is because Miss Smith, our history teacher, has asked us to write an assignment on something in women's history that has shaped our generation. Lucy's going to come over soon and we're going to go over our assignments. And Lucy's back to her old self, by the way, laughing and uncontrollable. I still haven't told her about what happened at the hypnosis treatment with John. There is something different about her. Her teeth are longer and her skin is paler. It's very strange. And the bites on her neck still haven't healed. Very odd. Mia, Mia, Mia! I so need your help. What is it? Does something happen? Something bad? I need your help to choose an outfit for tomorrow. This dress makes me look taller. But this dress shows off my legs beautifully. What? I heard in Vogue that dresses that make you look taller is a fashion yes for women. Can you just picture him gazing at me in this dress? What are you talking about? Mia, have you forgotten? Drake, the new teacher assistant, is starting tomorrow. Mrs. Smith announced it during class, remember? And I need your artistic eye. Okay, but can't we just look over our assignments first? Mia, 
This is far more important than any school paper, and I really need your help choosing an outfit. Please, will you help me? Well, that didn't go as planned. After that, Lucy made me go shopping with her so she could get shoes to match her outfit. I mean, that girl does not waste a minute, except where it counts the most, studying. I just wish she'd take a more active approach in her studies. Maybe I'm being too hard on her. One day she'll use all her talents to help the world. That's all from me today, Jim. Lots of love. Hi, Jim. It's Mia. I've just gotten a new haircut, a new wardrobe, and I've stolen Lucy's face. Comment below if you think it's a beautiful face. <laughs> Just kidding. It's me, Lucy. I thought I'd take this opportunity to tell you about today, while Mia is out for the day. So today, the mysterious, tall, dark and handsome Drake came strolling into history class. All the girls, including Mrs Smith, were practically drooling at him and making goo-goo eyes at him all day. <laughs> it was hysterical. <laughs> Mrs Smith asked him to give a brief account on his past. He said he comes from an old, noble family that has big history. Unimpressed? Well, he also said that his family owns lots of properties all over the world, including England, Romania, and New York. That's just incredible. Still unimpressed? I also found out that he is incredibly wealthy. Probably more wealthy than my dad. Could you just imagine if we got together with sell around on one of my father's yachts and then maybe in two or three years we'd get engaged and live in one of his penthouses in New York. What are you doing? Oh, nothing, nothing. Just talking to myself. You're talking to yourself while the camera's on. What's going on? Oh, I was just informing him on my future and getting a boyfriend. I thought you were dating Arthur. Oh, Arthur's history. I've got my sights set on something much, much, much higher. Please, you're not thinking about Drake. What's wrong? He's cute and wealthy. What's wrong with that? He could turn out to be a total douchebag. <laughs> He's hardly a douchebag, Mia. He's handsome, bright, and cute. Have you talked to him yet? No, I tried to, but all the girls were circling around him like vultures, ready to attack. Why? When did you speak to him? I talked to him in the corridor. Besides, I have new tricks to attract him. What kind of tricks? You and Jim will just have to wait and see. <laughs> I never would have imagined Lucy trying so desperately to win the affections of a man. And she was so secretive about the way she was going to do it. I don't know, something just eerie about him. It's like time melts away when we're in class. Like cold air. Like air conditioning's on. It's nothing to worry about. I better go to bed now. Night, Jim. Hi Jim, this is insane. No, it's worse, it's crazy. It's been only a few days and I've already grown weary of Drake. He's becoming my worst nightmare. Do you know what the worst part is? He's become tutoring some of the girls in my class, Lucy included. This is gonna make it so difficult for me to see her outside of school. And when I do see her, all she goes on about is his amazing hair, sparkling eyes and winning smile. Exhibit A. Oh Mia, he's incredible. He talks like he should be a singer or an actor. Do you think he's studied singing before? Beats me. Could you just imagine us getting together? I thought you were with Arthur. Arthur is just college candy. But with Drake? Wow, he makes me believe I can do anything. 
Have you talked to him yet? No. Mia, why are you so quiet? You look like you're holding something back. Spill. It's nothing. Come on, Mia. Come on. Look, there's just something about him I don't like. It's like he gets everyone to bow before him like he's a king or a god. It's eerie. <laughs> you know what I think? I think you're jealous because he helps me more than you could ever help me. I'll talk to you later. Lucy. Lucy. So that's what happened. I tried calling her, but she's blocked my number. That's all for me today. Night, Jim. Lots of love. unexplained dog attacks taking place on campus. Just last week a girl was found passed out on a footy field. She's okay now but she has so many unexplained bite marks on her arms and her neck. Then a second attack took place at the laboratory. A couple of girls saw a big black dog fleeing the scene. And then one person said it wasn't even a dog, it was a big wolf. Some of the students are so freaked out that they want to leave campus until this is all over. But the dean said he's just going to hire more security and get the TSAs and students to keep watch. John, Arthur and Drake have signed up for this. No surprise there with Drake. Just another feather to add to his cap. Lucy still aren't speaking to me. Tad insults the injury, she started hanging out with the three sisters. This is all just a horrible nightmare and I wish it was over. <laughs> Hi Mia, this is from Mrs. Smith. Thanks. received a letter from Miss Smith and she's giving me a C on my report card. I mean, this is insane. I have always been at the top of my class and I never need any help with my grades. And she's suggesting I should get a tutor. None other than Drake Alucard. In what planet or universe do I need his help? He's caused a lot of damage to my friendship with Lucy and the other girls I tutor. He's a total washout. Miss Morris? Mr. Alucard? Hi. May I come in? Why not? So, uh, what's with the camera? It's just a vlog for my boyfriend. Cool. Alright, let's get started. Look, I'm not really into this whole tutoring thing. I prefer to study alone or friends, so let's just drop it. Look, I know neither one of us wants to be here, but let's just, let's just give this a try. If anything, it'll get Mrs. Smith off our backs. Fine. Okay, let's get started. Some suffragists handcuff themselves to railings or mm. broke shop windows just get arrested. And I never knew that some women didn't believe in the right to women's votes. Oh, I guess you learn something new every day, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, is that the time? I have to run. So, um, we will continue our session tomorrow then? Ah, yes, tomorrow. Okay. Till tomorrow. So, I guess Drake really isn't that bad after all. I mean, he seems to have a great deal of knowledge and most of it didn't come from the internet. So, he might be really popular and turn a few heads, but 
I'm still mad he took away my friends. I don't know, there's just something weird about him. It's like this nagging in the back of my head. There's something he's keeping from everyone. Mia, Mia, you've got to come quickly. It's Lucy. She, she, she just got attacked. You must come quickly. She might be dying. Oh my. Jim, my last episode you heard that Lucy had been brutally attacked by some wild animals. By the time we got to the library, the school security guards told us she'd been rushed to hospital. When we finally reached the hospital, I feared for the worst. The doctors didn't tell us what happened. I didn't see her for a few minutes, lying in a hospital bed. She was so deathly pale. Doctors forced us to wait in the waiting room. Then Lucy's parents arrived and the doctors told them more about her condition. Turns out she's got anemia. It's a blood disorder characterized by normally low levels of red blood cells. There are many forms of anemia. Most are caused by ongoing or sudden blood loss. So the doctor's gonna keep her in for the next few weeks see what type of anemia she has. They told us all to go home and that they'd update her, us of her progress. John's interning at the hospital, so he said he'd let Arthur and I know if anything happens before then. This whole thing has shaken me to my core. Lucy is my only family and it's my fault that I pushed her away. I don't know what I'm going to do without her. Hey, I thought we might um, finish what we discussed the other day. Come here. What's, um, what's wrong? What's so bad? Oh, nothing. Okay. I have this friend. And yeah. She's more than a friend. She's my family. She's just been placed in the hospital. I'm so sorry to hear that. But I'm sure she'll get better. Trust me. Not just that. We had a fight a while back and feel partly responsible for her being in hospital. If anything happens to her, I just don't. I know, I know what you're feeling. I, um... I lost both my parents in a car accident many, many years ago. And I, um... There was a lot I wish I could have said to them. See, that's why I'm so grateful for the friends I have now. What I'm saying is, I, I'm sure your friend's going to be fine. Okay. You can see it in your eyes. Thanks, Jake. Makes me feel a lot better. It's okay. Hey, listen, let's, um, let's skip tutoring. Let's go get pizza. Thanks, but I'm going to wait by the phone in case there's any news. Okay. Well, you know where to find me. See you later. Never believe what happened. Three more girls were attacked in the same way as Lucy and the other girls were. Enough is enough. So I'm calling everyone here to decide what to do. So what is this all about, Maya? This epidemic is spreading. Everyone in the hospital is super pale and they're losing a lot of blood. I don't believe it's just anemia. If the police and the dean aren't going to do anything, then we should. But how? We can't fight this. If John thinks he's found something, tell them, John, like you told me. It turns out you're right about the anemia. I did some digging around in the library and I found something incredible. It turns out this anemia is caused by a vampire. 
Are you joking, John? Vampires don't exist. Yeah, uh, I'm with Quinn on this one. Are you sure you've got your facts straight? Last night, I was at the library and I stumbled across this. And it told me a detailed story about some occurrences. All of the symptoms are the same as Lucy and the others. Blood loss, pale skin, teeth growing longer, and horrible nightmares. If those were vampire attacks, why aren't any of the girls turning into vampires? Good question, Quinn. I've discovered that during an eclipse, when a vampire bites a human, they turn into a vampire too. If a vampire bites you on an ordinary, ordinary night, the victims get seriously sick and die. I've already told the doctors about my theories, but they refused to listen. They decided to end my volunteering at the hospital. They commented that I should be interning or living in a mental asylum. The bloody cheek. John's theory makes sense. I know I saw something the night Lucy was abducted. I didn't know what it was, but now it makes sense. Okay, so what do we do now? Like, we still haven't identified the vampire. It, it could be anyone. Drake has a point. Finding this vampire might be a bit of a challenge. For all we know, he might have moved by now. I don't think so. Okay, who do we think could be a vampire? Considering the amount of evidence, I think it's our Dean Professor Van Helsing. Who else would continue covering up these previous events? Why isn't there further inquiry from the police? Mr. Van Helsing might be our vampire, or he might know the identity of our vampire. John, that's perfect. It makes sense. So what's the plan? Do we try catch him, turn him in? No, we still need evidence that he's a vampire. I don't like where this is going, Maya. It feels a lot like a witch hunt. Nothing's gonna go wrong. So, where do we start? I think we should start at his office. <laughs> what? 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 Then, while we do that, Drake can go to the admin office and get his home address. We can look there too. M Maya, are you crazy? That's breaking and entering. I, I won't do it. I'm with Quinn here. We could get in heaps of trouble. Count me out. Wait, guys. If we don't do this, we'll never find out who's trying to kill those girls. You better be right, man. You owe me huge if you're wrong about this. Okay, guys. Like I said, we'll go search his office and Drake will get his home address from the admin office. It sounds risky, but I'll do it. Okay, guys, we'll meet back here tomorrow to proceed with the plan. So that went well. I'll let you know how we go tomorrow at the proceedings. Hopefully, we'll find who is trying to kill these girls. I better turn in. Night, Jim. Love you. Jim? Uh, hello Jimbo. Mia wasn't wrong saying introducing those web videos is difficult. Anyway, Mia asked me to take over today's video while she and Drake study for her exams. She asked me to tell you how the break-in went. I arranged Arthur to distract Mr. Van Helsing while Mia and I ransacked his office. There I discovered a lot of weird and unusual books on his bookcase. Most of them were on vampire folklore and myths. Mia also discovered in his desk an old ring with a Order of the Dragon coat of arms on it. I later found that the coat of arms belongs to Vlad the Impaler, aka Count Dracula. We would have searched for more evidence, but Quinn came in and told us Mr. Helsing was on his way. So, we ducked out before he arrived. I later found in my research, and from other sources, that it might be our new roommate, who might be our mysterious vampire. His name is Thomas Renfield. He's studying entomology here. 
He was also one of the witnesses to the last two attacks. He's rather a creepy guy who likes playing practical jokes on people and gross everyone out with his obsession with bugs. And once, during a wager, I saw him swallow a whole worm. Ugh. It was repulsive. Anyway, back to our investigation. While we were raiding Mr. Van Helsing's office, Drake was able to get his hands on his home address. So hopefully, we'll solve this puzzle, and then... Okay, What's happened? Nothing, she just... She just felt a little faint and collapsed. Mia, are you alright? What happened? Nothing. What just... happened, Drake? She was just saying that she was losing a bit of sleep and then we on our way back to the dorm and she just fainted. I don't see any marks here, but one of us should probably stay with her while the other phones the doctor. I'll, I'll stay, stay with, with her. You. We can't both stay. One of us should go. Oh, well, paper, scissors, rock then? No, I'll do it. If she wakes, be sure to give her some water or juice. It will boost her energy levels up a little. Hi Jim. I don't remember much about last night, but I do remember Drake making me feel comfortable in my room. Dr. Stewart and John soon came round. John was really worried about me until he found out I was okay. He thinks that Professor Van Helsing found out we were trying to break into his house and used his mind powers to try and take me out. Sounds like his MO. John also thinks that Thomas Renfield might be our vampire. I don't blame him. The kid puts half-eaten sandwiches under his bed to attract cockroaches. Yuck. Dr. Van Helsing, I mean, Professor, what are you... Miss Morris, may I have a word with you regarding the other day? Uh, well, actually, I was just gonna go to the library. This will only take a minute, Miss Morris. Mia, just the other day, my office was broken into and ransacked. Oh, that's terrible. No, it's not the first time a student has done this. I get plenty of students that pull pranks, steal test answers, even key my car. Now, I'm not into giving harsh punishments. However, I must make some here or there. You understand, don't you, Mia? Uh, yes, sir. Mia, do you have any idea who may have broken into my office? Uh, no. One of our students, a Mr. Reinfeld, said he saw you running from my office that day. Can you explain? Uh, well, we were... If you're looking for news about your friend Lucy, I'm sure she will be well soon. I also have my security guards scouring for those wild dogs, so you have nothing to worry about. Thank you, sir. So what's my punishment? For you, Miss Morris? Nothing. You simply made a mistake here, and I won't charge you for it. Incidentally, before I came here, I went through your academic records. I have to admit, I'm very impressed with the work you've done this year. It's some of the best I've seen in years. Really? Yeah. How would you like to study in Oxford, London? L London as in England? Yes, as in Big Ben, as in Buckingham Palace, London Bridge. I have quite a few friends in Oxford and they would love to have you in their program. I'm so interested. Great. 
I'll let them know. Now, I should be going. Oh, and Mia, in future, ask me instead of taking the easy way out and breaking into my office. Okay? Mia, what happened? Why was Professor Van Helsing here? I think he's on to us. He's already tried to bribe me with offering me a study in England. Incredible! Wonderful! Amazing! I don't like it, guys. What's not to like? You're going to live your dream. You've always said you wanted to study abroad, experience new things and all that jazz. You're lucky, Mia. I don't feel lucky. I feel like he's trying to buy me off. There's something weird about this guy. We need to keep an eye on him. Are you serious, Mia? Very. I've also been thinking about what John said about Renfield possibly being our vampire. That is a big possibility. He's strange, I'll give you that. Not only last week he was explaining to me the details of mating praying mantises. The details almost made me faint. Okay, so what do we do now? Well, I think that Drake and Quinn, you should check out Professor Van Helsing, and John and Arthur, you should check out Renfield. Wait, what about you? Which team will you be on? Neither. Professor Van Helsing is already suspicious of me. He might come here to check up on me. I'll stay here. I can research about vampires here anyway. Okay. But keep the doors locked while we're gone. And wear this. Thanks, John. So, when do we do this? Today? Tomorrow? We should give it at least a week. By then things will be over and Mia will be clear. So will all of us. Sounds like a plan. Okay, I'll see you guys then. Hi Jim. Today I went to the mall to try and clear my mind but I can't get rid of this eerie thing that plagues me. Lucy and I would always go shopping when we were feeling down. Whether it was a bad test grade or a horrible breakup, I mean just going shopping we'd feel so much better. Not today. Walking around I felt so alone. So I went to visit Lucy but the doctors wouldn't let me see her and the nurses said she needs her rest. When I got back to my dormitory, I phoned Lucy's mum. She said she hasn't heard anything either. She asked about how I was and how you were, about my grades. I can't blame her. She has every right to be worried about her daughter. Left here at the front desk. Thank you. <laughs> Jim. To my beloved Mia. is finally over. Sign D. It's from him. What? How? When? Clear me at any time. At this point in time, I can't tell. It might be a warning, or he might... He might what? He might be planning to make you his next victim. What? John, that is absurd. No, it makes perfect sense. The Eclipse, the Night Visitor, 
this sudden trip to England to silence me. Now this. It's clear from the beginning. He's planned to kill me. Well, if that's the case, then we have to protect you from this, this, this vermin. Drake's right, Mia. We must protect you from this monster. Or maybe you can take a leave of absence from the campus. No, John, I still want to know who he is. We have to move forward with this plan immediately. Okay. But we're not leaving you here alone. I'll remain and protect you. While the rest of us stake out this creature. So it's been decided that while Quinn, Arthur and Drake are staking up Professor Van Helsing's house and looking into Renfield, I'm under house arrest. I'll let you know how we go with it. Night, Jim. Love you. Mia, are you absolutely sure you want the camera on? You don't have to document everything on here. Jim will understand. No, John. I want to. You look awfully pale. Are you getting enough sleep? How could I with that thing out there? Hi, Jim. Tonight we're putting in our plan to catch the vampire. Hi guys, nothing to report here, but Thomas did go into the woods earlier and dig some holes. I can't seem to make any sense of it. That's good, Arthur. His activities seem fairly usual. Going to lunch, going to classes, meeting up with friends. Aside from digging the holes, everything's been normal. Did you search the holes? Maybe he left something or someone in them. Yeah, there was nothing in them. Stay on him and keep us informed about his activities. Bye, Arthur. <coughs> Guys. What happened to Quinn? I don't know, she's going to need a doctor. Drake, what happened? Oh, we were attacked. What? Well, that thing again. Uh, it doesn't look bad. Only a couple of stitches and she'll be alright. I'll go fetch my dad at his office. Here, here, take my car. No, no, we'll take mine. John, I'll meet you at your car. Drake, look after Mia and Quinn. Forget them. Forget, forget all of them. It, it's time to think about you and and me and 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 us. Okay, You're him, aren't you? All this time it's been you. I should have known. Is this how you get your victims? Am I next on your list? No, no, me, me. You're not on my list. Okay. When the eclipse comes, you and I will be together forever. Why me? You, you are the spitting image of my Justina. She, God, she was beautiful and, and she loved art and she just yearned for adventure. But I'm not her. Yes, you are. For years I've waited so long for you and I've overcome so many obstacles to get to you. Obstacles? Oh, removing your, your boyfriend and, and removing your friends. You're the one. You sent my rejection letter, weren't you? Yes. I... I couldn't let you go again. You see, many years ago, many, many years ago, your great-great-grandmother, Mina Murray, she escaped my clutches. I don't want to let that happen again. Look, enough with this, with this small talk, let's go. But first, you know, for old time's sake, 
Wait, wait, wait. If I promise to go with you, will you not hurt any of my friends? Why? What are they to us? Please. Fine. If, if that will please you, then fine. Let her go, Drake. Or shall I call you Count Dracula? Oh, bold words coming from you, Stuart. How did you figure out who I was? It had nothing to do with us. The credit goes to Professor Van Helsing. When he visited Mia, he left a transmitter bug under her desk. Mm. Smart move, Helsing. But you'll never outsmart me. I know where they're going, but we must hurry. Mia's camera. I thought if we find Mia, she would want us to film these events. If we ever get out of here alive. <gasps> this is it. This is the spot. How do you know this is the place? Because you must go to a hollowed ground to perform the ceremony. There, in the distance, that bright light, in the middle of the cemetery, that's where we must go. But we must hurry. Bless this union, Lord of Darkness. Oh gosh. Unite us this very night. Now, my beloved, to seal this pact with an eternal kiss. Back off, blood sucker. <laughs> She's mine already, Professor. No! Someone? Yeah, yeah, listen, listen to me. Listen to me. If you kill me now, you're killing any opportunity to exist on a completely different plane. To, to, to see the things that you've only seen in your dreams and, and to experience incredible opportunities with the one that you truly desire. That's mine. You know, your heart is true. Jim, Mia is still suffering from the events that took place the other day. I thought I might clue you up on what happened. Like how Arthur and I found out Professor Van Helsing wasn't our suspected vampire. Well, on the way to my car, Professor Van Helsing appeared and explained everything to us. He was aware of all the vampire activities that after the first few attacks took place and wished to keep it under wrap to prevent the school from panic. He made up all that stuff about the victims being attacked by wild animals. Good news. The girls, including Lucy, are all better. When we got back to the dorm, Lucy's mom phoned and told us Lucy has made a full recovery and will probably be back at school soon. So more or less, things are back to normal. The doctors are baffled, are still baffled by this miracle cure. Professor Van Helsing plans to offer me an internship in a hospital in New York. He said he knows people who wish to meet and discuss my theories on anemia. So roughly, that's all that's happened. I'll talk to you later, Jim. This is John signing off.
Hi, Jim. I can't stand this any longer. If one more person tells me I'm traumatized by the events that have happened, I'm going to scream. John Arthur Quinn and Professor Van Helsing have been driving me insane for the past couple of days. Calling, messaging, emailing me to see if... Exhibit A. Hi Mia, we're at the cafeteria and we're wondering if you want to catch up for a movie later. So be messaging me non-stop to see if I'm okay or want to hang out. Honestly, I just still can't get over what's happened. And the worst part of it was that part of me was drawn to Drake. I wanted what he had to offer. I keep trying to tell myself that I was just under a spell like those other girls. I mean, because he did harm a lot of girls. And one of them was Lucy. That's my name. Don't wear it out. Lucy! It's so good to see you. I never thought I'd see you again. When did you get released from the hospital? Just now. You look exhausted. What's happened in the last few days? It hasn't been days. It's been weeks. And a lot's happened. So that's what happened. Oh, wow. I scarcely believe it. All this happened while I was in hospital. So Drake is a vampire. Correction, was. I knew he was different, but I didn't know how different. And I'm also shocked by his obsession with you. Uh, yeah, about that. I'm sorry. Sorry? For what? For stealing the guy I liked? Or at least I thought I liked? <laughs> you know, I don't know why I fell for him in the first place. It could have been his spell, or I was just blind. Yeah. The worst part of all is that he was caught on camera for Jim to see. And I don't know how to explain to him that the girl that fell for Drake and the girl I am are two very different people. He will understand me, oh. He's always been understanding, and always will be. I'm so lucky to have you back. Hi, Jim. I wanted to apologize for those videos. I just I can't express how sorry I am. So guilty. You probably never want to speak to me again. Guess who? <laughs> Jim! Yeah, there's no fool in you, is there, Mia? How are you going? Good. Hey. Oh. What? I thought you were going to be overseas for no, a while. No, I came back to see you. And well, I really want to talk about the videos. Right, about those. They were the coolest videos ever, seriously. I didn't know, you, like, I knew you were creative, but I didn't know you were this creative. Like, seriously, the, I didn't even see you as a good filmmaker, but it, it was really believable. Those videos were... And, and I, I didn't know how, like, university would be, like, taken over by a herd of zombies. Vampires. Anyway, but yeah, um, our Dean, like, he's a, he's a vampire hunter. That's great. Like, and, and then Arthur and John, they were screaming those scenes, loved it. Um, but yeah, a minute in, thought it was all real. It was. And who's that, um, who's that guy that plays a vampire? Drake. Drake, yeah. So I was thinking, who names their kid Drake? It's just weird, like it's like a washed up 80s pop idol or something. Yeah, a bit strange. But anyway, um, look, don't worry, Drake was awesome as a vampire. And, and the way the kids developed that, like, freaky virus, that was great. And then... And then, and then the vlog, and then you, you were fantastic. Seriously, I think you're gonna get an Emmy for this. Watch out George Lucas and Steven Spielberg, there's a new filmmaker in town. Yeah, anyway, I got crap. I gotta, I've made plans with some friends down the beach, so I better go. Um, do, do you actually wanna come? Um, maybe later. Maybe later? All right, don't worry. All right, do you, um, yeah, we should watch the films when I get back. I, I love the first one, seriously, with the night visitor and stuff. How'd you actually do that? Uh, 
after effects. Oh, cool. All right, well, you're going to have to teach me how to do that when I get back, eh? Okay? All right, then. I'll see you later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Hey guys, so little update. Things have pretty much gone back to normal, but some things have changed. Like Lucy, she's still a bubbly self, but she's finally applied herself to her studies. As proof, I have her assignment, which she got an A on. Look, I am just so proud of her. And as for John, he's planning to start his new internship next month. I will miss him a lot. I don't know what we would have done without him around. He's been so helpful in our lives over the last few months. Moving on, Arthur and Quinn have developed into an item. I thought Lucy might chuckle wobbly when she found out, but she was actually really cool about the whole thing. Arthur seems more confident around Quinn. And as for Jim, he still doesn't believe me about what's happened. He thinks it's all just fiction. Maybe that's for the best. And one day in a few years, I'll tell him it's all true. You're probably wondering what's next for me. Well, this might shock or even frighten you, but I've decided... Hi, Mia. Are you ready for our tutoring session? Yeah, I've got my books all here. Wait, why is the camera on? I thought you were done with filming. Mm, I thought I'd make one final video. That's a shame. I hate to see you give it up. It was kind of growing on me. That's the thing. I'm not. What? I mean, the vlog was such an amazing way to show not only Jim, but the whole world my story. And in the future, I want to create new and more exciting ones. So I've decided next semester that I'm going to change my major to filming. That's great, Mia. <laughs> you know, in a way, Drake played a big part in this. What? How? I mean, he offered me to change something about my life. If it wasn't for him, we wouldn't have learned to chase our dreams or take new and exciting opportunities. Well, are you still planning on studying abroad and taking Mr. Van Helsing's offer? Maybe, just not at present. I've also learned that you don't need to go overseas to have new adventures. You can get them right at home. So I'm going to stay here and study and hang out with my friends more. Whatever makes you happy, Mia. We should go to our studying session. Mm, maybe not just yet. Why don't we go to a club or to the movies or even just stay at home and chill? Mia, this isn't like you. I know, but I want to make changes in my life and I think that they should start now. Okay, who are you and what have you done <laughs> with my best friend? Come on, let's paint the town red. <laughs> I think the campus has been painted red enough. Let's paint it pink instead. Hot pink. <laughs> <laughs> to say thanks to all our su wonderful supporters, our nice, the nice comments, nice sharing, and the nice publicity out of this web series. Frankly guys, without you guys, there would not be web series about. We would probably be just a bunch of people just hanging around doing nothing. Yeah. Or just sitting on the couch. Hmm. Three people yeah. on the couch, could you imagine that? We'll just be just sitting here waiting for the camera to roll. And there it is, it's rolling, 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 rolling. Okay, enough jokes aside. Uh, we couldn't do it thanks to our, all our loyal followers, and we couldn't thank, we really like to 
show our support to all the people who've worked on this project, not just to the cast, but to all our supportive crew. If without them, we would have just be still, no, not have made this production possible. To, I'd like to thank my sound course crew who have worked really hard on this project, Peter and, and Curtis. Thank you very much guys for coming in and helping us out. And for our dear director of photography, Robert, who assisted throughout our web series. Thanks Robert, very much. Uh, for all our makeup ladies, thanks for coming in and assisting us. So, thanks a lot guys. I also like to thank Thomas, Sky, Bowen, who played our Oh, and Timothy and Isis and who else? Um, oh yeah, and Leo who who assists us in, in all our cast. I can't I can't thank you guys enough for taking part as our loyal cast in this web series too. So thanks very much for coming in too. Also, we have a few thoughts about this web series before we cut off. Completely. So, what did you guys thought about our web series? Did you guys enjoy it? Did you enjoy taking part in it? Yeah, I loved it. It was great. Yeah, it was super fun. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. I, I enjoyed it a lot. I especially like the um, location shooting, like where we took um, footage from um, Mount, Gra Mount Gravatt Cemetery. It was really fun going down there to scout out for t um, graveyard scenes for our trailers and, and web for our web series mm -hmm. and to make our own web our own cemetery in near the men shed if it wasn't for the men shed they did an awesome job supplying us with um, a location for our most interesting part of the web series we couldn't we can't thank you enough guys thank you I can't speculate enough that this web series has brought a lot of enjoyment out of it and I can't believe how much I got to enjoy working with a lot of cast and crew members. It's if okay. it wasn't for you guys, we would have, this has been an excellent experience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I just, I'm just so happy that we put this together. I just, I just can't say, stop saying thank you. Well. It, it's just great gratifying uh, just to be here and having to work with so many people I, I'm going to like. Well, this last year it started off as a short film project for school and now it's become a very big TV web series on, on YouTube. It's unbelievable. It's really good. And I can't wait to do some more of it next year, hopefully. And maybe bring in more of my favorite cast cast for next year, hopefully. Maybe we might be looking at making a, sh a few more short films, maybe a few a feature film, maybe music video with a lot if we get, if anyone's interested out there to take part. So I'll just keep us informed if you guys got any film projects out there that you wish to put together, we'll be glad to help out. So thanks very much again. I can't thank you guys enough for, you know, helping us out. All right. Thanks. Anyway, I, <laughs> I keep saying thank you too many times, but I am very grateful to all of you guys for helping us make this web series a reality. So thanks everyone. So I'll see you guys next time in our next film production. Okay. Bye now.
I was naked Dancing 